Hello, welcome back to Week 6 Steam Processing. Uh, in this video, we are basically going to talk about KSQLDB. So KSQLDB is basically Kafka way of uh, doing some sort of SQL, very quick analysis uh, with respect to your uh, streams which are coming in. Uh, this can be used as an analytical process, a testing process, or it can also be used in production. Uh, but just be a bit more careful about how do you use that in production. Um, you might want to use the Java API client on top of the KSQL commands uh, so that you can have this maintainability and you can know what kind of commands actually went into production. Uh, but this is a really great tool for quick testing and quick uh, kind of like getting a feeling of uh, what your data is inside Kafka. So uh, for that, we would need to go to KSQL DB. If you log into the first page, you would need to add a cluster. Uh, and I will just add the global access cluster. So uh, I already did that. And once you do it, you will see a cluster basically which you have created here. So uh, in this, we can already test some of the streams, some of the tables and all that. Uh, obviously we do not have anything right now, uh, but what we can do is basically create this. So first let's take a look at our topics and what kind of data do we have? So uh, in our topics, one of the most important topic I think for us was basically rides. So maybe we can take a look into partition count or some message of this. Uh, can we do that here? Something is showing up, no. But we can actually produce some data using our Java code. Uh, user, just to see some data, right? Nothing special. And we can already see data coming in. So we can just pause this for now. What I really wanted to see was what kind of data do we have here. Uh, and based upon this data, what we can do in KSQL DB is create streams. So uh, I already have this uh, code set up. So just open this uh, and I'm going to explain this SQL to you. So what we can do is we can say from our Kafka topic rights, let me just make it a bit bigger. So from our Kafka topic rights, which is in the format JSON, take out these three variables, right? So we take our vendor ID, we take our trip distance, we take out payment type. Let's see if anything else is interesting for us. Let's also take out passenger count because why not, right? So we can say passenger count is double. And this basically what it does, it basically creates a stream. We can say all offset reset to uh, latest uh, so that uh, or earlier so that we get all the data which we just executed. So we can run this query uh, and we can see that this stream has been basically created. We can just check it out here uh, or in flows and we can see that there is a right stream which is basically doing its trick. And if you look, it only has the data which we asked for, right? So now we can basically query our stream, right? So let's select this. Let's select star from right stream. Okay. So we can do it earliest again. So we run the query. We again see that the data is coming in. So now what else can we do? We can maybe count. So we already counted, right? So let's try it again. So we can just say count star. Stop this one, run the query again from earliest. And there's there is some, some 211 messages were there. Uh, this is not that interesting. So we can also group by uh, what did we had? We had right stream had so vendor ID, trip distance, payment type. Let's try to group it by. By payment type, and then we can say payment type dot count. Let's try to run this query. And we can see that with different payment types, we can already have a feeling. So now we can see that the payment type one is the most famous one. So it's around 131 uh, rows. Uh, the payment type two is the second one, and the payment type four is the least one. 
maybe this is using the app, this is using cash, and this is using I don't know some other credit card format. Uh, so this is uh, this is basically we can now play around with this. Uh, but let's go back to our README and see what else can we do. So we can stream the counts. We can basically uh, filter it. Uh, so let's try this query also. So it's almost the same query. We just added a where clause. So where payment type is in one and two, uh, just to see if the filters are actually working. So now we can see the fourth one is gone. Let's change this to, let's say, passenger count. So passenger count uh, less than less than three. Let's say only for one and two. And we can also say passenger count. Passenger count as a group by statement. Stop this. We can run this query again. And we can already see that there is something happening. So now let's do one. Let's try to re reproduce messages. So let's assume that more messages are coming in and this is while this is running. So uh, if the message so are coming in, you can already see that there is an update in the passenger count one uh, and also in then passenger count two. Uh, basically, this is then going on, uh, going up. And that's basically happening because I am running my producer at the same time. So if new data is coming in, you can already kind of uh, produce this information and can consume this uh, in, in another stream uh, so that you can later on, like I don't know, simply consume this to another uh, dashboard or something where you can show some live uh, live counts or live uh, matrices. So let's uh, stop this for now. Uh, let's also stop this. Uh, let's see what else we can do. Okay, so we can also uh, window, window some functions. So let's try to create a table with this. So what we're doing now is basically we are creating a table. We are again doing the payment type and count, uh, but we are doing it in a 60 seconds uh, break. So we can run this query. And because we are creating a table now, uh, this basically would be here. And we can already see if we can inspect the processing logs. Okay, no. Uh, but what we can do is uh, we can select this stuff. So editor select star from new down amid changes. We can run this query. And hopefully we will see something. And we can see that the data is now coming in. But there is a difference between this query and what we did with create table. So let's copy that one again and this one. So what this query did, let me just stop this one. So what this create table did was created a persistent query. And that persistent query means that it will always be running in the background. There will be no issues. Uh, and this is basically for our testing purposes. This is basically quick feedback where we can test this and get some data here. Uh, but these uh, are basically persistent queries and they have actually created a table behind uh, behind it in a payment type sessions uh, and inside that topic. So now this is a topic basically. So you can take this topic and you can now uh, consume it offline and basically build something on top of it. Uh, what we were doing earlier, we were was basically creating some uh, flows which are not that interesting, right? So now we can already see that there are some uh, flow which is created so right streams is creating this table and if we use this table to do something else we might also be able to see that here uh, but the important point is uh, that if you really want to create uh, something which is long running create a persistent query like this so what i will do now is basically uh, okay well, let's try to explain this query mm, so we can see the order offset reset we can see uh, what what the different uh, columns are uh, and what are their types uh, what I'm going to do is right now terminate it because I'm running on a free account with limited amount of money. So I will just terminate this query and I can just do that using this one. So uh, the session has been deleted um, and basically there are no persistence query running anymore. 
KSQL DB is again a great way to start up with Kafka. Uh, if you already have data in Kafka, it's a great way to quickly test things out. Um, it's also a nice way to uh, figure out uh, if your data is in a particular format, you might want to build some uh, real-time uh, dashboards and show it to your uh, to your consumers uh, or to your stakeholders very quickly. And in those cases, uh, KSQL DB uh, kind of provides a really nice interface or a really nice in-between uh, to quickly test your uh, your proof of concept uh, before you actually build a Kafka stream application or wrap around the KSQL DB using, uh, using the Java client. And one of the disadvantages of KSQL DB is basically you will require a separate cluster altogether, right? So actually when I started KSQL DB, I had to build a cluster. So this is not running on the same Kafka stream cluster. This is running on uh, a different cluster. So you would need to have more maintenance. Obviously you will spend more money doing this. Uh, so it might not be ideal for certain cases. And that's why I'm saying uh, this is a good work for proof of concepts, prototyping, uh, but you might want to later uh, look into Kafka streams uh, or something else. Let's take a quick look into Kafka connectors also. So Kafka is a streaming application, but basically your data is either relying in another data source like Google uh, Cloud Storage, uh, AWS S3, uh, a SQL table, a Snowflake uh, instance. You want this data to come into Kafka. Sometimes what you really want also is to take the data and put it out to another uh, sync, which can again be Google Cloud Storage, AWS S3, Snowflake, Elasticsearch, uh, or something else. Uh, and in all these cases, uh, we can use something uh, we called Kafka Connect. Uh, and basically uh, Kafka Connect already provides a lot of uh, connectors. As we can see, uh, we can select the type. So let's say we want to put something in uh, Elasticsearch. So we can just quickly take a look. Uh, we can basically select this topic, continue, uh, global access. Uh, yeah, I think we would need to generate uh, an API key for this, uh, but basically let's, let's try to do that, uh, continue. And then we can specify uh, the username, uh, or sorry, the URI and the passwords for our sync, right? So I don't have any Elasticsearch running right now, so I will just drop this. Uh, but basically, you can do all of this stuff uh, once once you are once you have this Kafka Connect cluster. If you are not using Conf Confluent Cloud DB, uh, nothing to worry. Uh, Kafka uh, Connect uh, also provides uh, other sources which are open source, so. Uh, through the Confluent Cloud, it just becomes easier. Uh, but if you go through this, uh, you can you can uh, check out uh, different Kafka Connect extensions. Um, let's see. Let's see. Kafka Connect um, open source. So. So we can already see that there are some open source documentations here and you can find a lot of connectors uh, and then we can see that there are so many connectors which are given an example. Uh, and all we need to do is, let's say we want to do a sync. Um, all we would need to do is basically build up a, a curl request. And if we give that curl request to uh, our uh, Kafka Connect cluster, uh, it should start this Kafka Connect already, right? So let's see if we can find an example like right, like this. So in the end, what we will do is basically create such a curl request, uh, and then this curl request can basically go to your Kafka Connect uh, cluster, uh, and then basically that will start the Kafka Connect itself. So all this code which you see, which are available in Confluent Cloud and also open source is already written, is already part of uh, the Kafka uh, Connect cluster, uh, the Kafka cluster. Sometimes you might want to add certain jars which might not be available by default. So you just need to uh, add them to your cluster. Uh, but once that's done, basically it's just as simple as a curl request. Just remember if you want to get your data from some data source or write to a data source, uh, you can use uh, Kafka Connect. Uh, and there are great documentations on this uh, available, which you can check 